Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Doc Ed Padama. If it is that part of the year again where you need to prepare for your research defense, then this video is for you. We are going to discuss research defense, the most significant parts of your PowerPoint presentation, and how you should present each one of them. So before we continue, please help my YouTube channel at Doc Ed Padama by clicking and hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded and if you have already subscribed to my youtube channel please like this video so we are going to start with the following overview of the content of your powerpoint presentation so at a glance you can already see the following contents of your powerpoint presentation so you have the following actually you only have five but the first one you just make sure that you place your full name in the first slide of your PowerPoint presentation. Since we're talking about your PowerPoint presentation, make sure you indicate and include your full name in your first slide or in your cover slide. Together with that is your research title. So how are you going to present your research title? You just uh, read your research title and together with that, you... Uh, present a brief background of your research and while you're doing both of this so the the presentation of the title is just reading the title so that is already considered as a presentation of the title and then together with that for the purposes of continuity in the discussion you go directly to the presentation of the background of the study so i've stated here brief background of the study because you are not supposed to copy paste everything that is written in your manuscript do not copy paste everything that is written in your manuscript that is why brief refers to the uh, significant and important points that you need to present in order to make a valid argument located in the background of the study that there is an existing the problem in the the problem or the issue is existing number one and number two there is a need to conduct the study there is a need to conduct the study so again i hope you were able to take all of that uh all of those uh, points that I have presented should be included in the background or presentation of the background of the study. So again, do not copy-paste. Second, make sure that the, your argument will uh, support that there is an existing problem that is uh, going on. That is why you are conducting this particular research. Second, that there is a need to conduct a research in order to address this particular problem. So all of that should be contained and located at the background of the study. So after presenting your title, a brief background of your study, present immediately the statement of the problem or the SOP. The SOP is divided into two parts. So you have the general problem and then the specific problem. So, make sure you double-check your PowerPoint presentation if you have these parts uh, reflected in your PowerPoint presentation. The general problem is just a restatement of the title. So, uh, you just add the terms, this study aims to identify, investigate, explore the, and then state the title of your research. So, that, that is already considered the general problem of your research so you can double check if that is how you presented and structured your general problem and then for the purpose of continuing the statement specifically this aims to okay letter a oh, number one what is the specific problem so on this particular part you are already writing or referring to the specific problem of your SOP or statement of the problem. So what do you need to do in order to present this? Aside from uh, reflecting this in your PowerPoint presentation, you just read them one by one. We are not going to discuss how to formulate your SOP, but how to present your SOP during your defense. So if there is a question regarding your SOP, you have to address them uh, 
you have to address the question of the panel not unless the panel will uh, uh, inform you that all of the questions will be presented after the presentation so you need to listen to the instructions of uh, the the panel or the the chairman of the committee during your research defense okay the next one is the theory or concept used the theory or concept used so the theory should contain the following okay actually there are three number one is the title of the theory okay so again number one is the title of the theory number two is the author of the theory the writer number three is the idea behind the theory okay so if the idea contains domains like domain a b c you include that in your uh, presentation of the theory or the concept so again these are supposed to be the content of your theory or concept we're going to repeat it again number one it should contain the title of the theory or concept number two the author or the writer of the theory and concept number three the idea okay so again uh in line with our discussion for today you are just going to present this and if the panel has a clarificatory question regarding the theory you just make sure this is my advice make sure that the theory or concept that you are using is relevant relevant to the study that you are conducting i have a video of this uh, I, I have a separate video of this in my youtube channel you can check that out it is uh, it is entitled crafting the uh, research theory crafting your research theory okay so after that the method and design used the difference between the method and design make sure that you are familiar and uh, uh, specific in the presentation of the method and the design there are two major methods used in research writing that's quantity and quality quantitative and qualitative and the other is mixed or otherwise known as hybrid or quanti quali quanti they usually call it quanti quali so this still refers to mixed method it's a combination of uh, the data gathering method using quantitative and qualitative but basically the major uh, methods used in research is quantitative and qualitative and then under this under this method example quantitative method you utilize quantitative method so you you mentioned that in number five under quantitative method what particular design did you use under this particular method so if you utilize quantitative method and then specifically the design that you're going to use is experimental or quasi-experimental then you have to you have to present that and include that in your powerpoint presentation by how but after stating the title of the method or the design you present the definition present the title of the design and present the definition and then present the the reason why you use this particular method or particular design so that is how you present the method and design and that is the difference between method and design okay so because there are uh, research presentations manuscripts that does not clearly state the method used or does not clearly state the design used or they use the term interchangeably and cannot identify which one is the method and which one is the design now in relation to the title of our discussion these are the most significant parts these are the most significant parts so those who are listening right now in our video discussion there are institutions schools and universities that would require you to add more than this okay but my point is that this should always be included in your powerpoint presentation these are the most important most significant parts of your powerpoint presentation and this is how you should present them so some universities may include or require you to include uh, rrls 
review of related literature and studies, significance of the studies, um, uh, scope and limitation. But in, in our university, we just focus on these particular parts so because these uh, will really decide if your study will push through or not. So if your title, if there's something wrong with your research title, then we can already identify by uh, comparing it with the uh, statement of the problem and the theory used. Okay? And then the brief background will only support the reason why you conducted your research study. It will prove that, again, based on the content of the background of the study, it will prove if there is really an existing problem and if there is a need to conduct the research. So this is the rationale behind the presentation of these particular parts. Okay, so I hope this will help you in preparing for your defense. And again, please help my YouTube channel by clicking and hitting that subscribe button. And click that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded. And if you have already subscribed to my channel, please hit the like button for this video. And there will be reference videos presented on the side of these uh, of this video that will help you in writing your research paper from chapters 1 to chapter 5 until your research defense. So thank you very much everyone and I hope to see you again on our next uh, video discussion on research writing. God bless, stay safe, goodbye!